So that's kind of gonna be similar to what we did with parallel plates. So if you do a solenoid, what would its inductance be? Negative EMF over DI DT. Okay, now here's how the definition is gonna be used. So then I'm gonna say, according to Faraday's law, the EMF induced in the wire is negative N uh, B D I D T. Um, sorry, negative N A D B D T. Negative N A. Right. So uh, what's happening here is when magnetic field is introduced, the magnetic field is changing. And then A is the surface area, the cross-sectional area of the solenoid, negative Na, dB, dt, over di, dt. And then the two negatives cancel. Okay, then I'm gonna say, what is the magnetic field inside of a long idealized solenoid? So uh, that's equal to mu zero little ni. Right, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing the inductance of an idealized, long ideal solenoid, not the general solenoid. Uh, so then the D by DT mu zero NI over DI DT. And then the mu zero N comes out. Then you have DI DT over DI DT and then those cancel. And now we have proven the equation for the inductance of the solenoid. N A mu zero little n, and then little n is equal to big N over L. So if we look at the <laughs> equations that we saw on Wikipedia, we could see if they had that, the inductance of a long solenoid. Where was that? Um, where was that? At the bottom of this page. <laughs> Okay, so they're giving, I believe they're giving the general, um, the, the inductance of a general um, solenoid here, N squared, D squared over 14D, let me see here, let me, uh, that's probably a general solenoid, inductance of long, solenoid. Yep, there you go. Mu zero and squared A over L. You see. Now notice they didn't write mu zero here. So why is that? Well, because uh, this mu, if you put some other material other than air, the mu is going to go up by a certain factor. So you see. So this mu zero would occur if the inside here is vacuum or air, then you use the magnetic permeability of uh, air, you know, which is the same as a vacuum. It's kind of like doing here, a E zero over D. But then when you put a dielectric, you multiply it by a certain factor, E zero kappa, right? And then this thing we could call E without the zero, you know, and then say A E over D, A E not zero, A E over D. And then E would be the product of the dielectric constant times the E zero, which is for 
uh, for air, right? So now we could do something similar to that and say, what if I put an iron rod inside? An iron rod. You see? So then, uh, because iron is a good conductor of magnetism and electricity, it will amplify the magnetic field created by the solenoid and it will magnify the inductance. So then we multiply this by a certain factor, uh, mu relative, which is sort of like the kappa. Uh, on this website, they're calling it the relative permeability of the core K. So they're actually calling this K. Their mu relative, they're calling this thing K. So it's kind of acts like the kappa of the dielectric constant. So then you multiply that by the mu zero and together they become the new mu, right? So the inductance becomes N squared A mu over L. So now that becomes equivalent to taking the, uh, the capacitor and placing the dielectric inside of it. That and multiplies the capacitance by a factor of K, you see. So then uh, here on this website, they're saying, okay, put in any length, let's say 20 centimeter solenoid. And then here you put any number of turns, let's say thousand turns, coil radius, is 3.14 relative permeability I could put let's say 300 then the inductance of the solenoid is 0.5927 henrys 592 henrys this is a single purpose calculation which gives you the inductance value when you make any changes in the parameters this is small inductors for electronics use may be made with iron cores. Uh, for larger values of inductance and for transformers, iron is used as a core material. The relative permeability of magnetic iron is around 200. So you see, that's what, it increases the, it increases the magnetism by 200 factor. So if I put magnetic iron in there, see it's gonna make the inductance 394 millihenries. So that's your typical sort of uh, inductor that you have. And then of course it says, this calculation makes use of the long solenoid approximation. It will not give good values for small air core solenoids since they are not good approximations to long. So you see why? Because we've used the long solenoid equation to calculate, so um, that's why it it's, uh, works well for long solenoids. So, what are some typical typical values for inductance for inductors in daily use? So the typical inductor will look like this, you see. Oh, these are nice pictures, nice. You see, in a circuit board, this is what it looks like. You see the circuit board here, like that. You see, it looks like this. Toroidal ferrite core coil inductor. You see, that's, those are nice pictures. I like that. Ooh. So it seems like these are common, the toroidal ones. Uh, no, then you have this type. Oh, I like this website. It's a lot of good pictures. 
Oh, you see that? Yeah, this is, is that a computer motherboard? See the capacitors are here and then you got the toroidal inductor. Yeah, beautiful looking, beautiful looking creatures. <laughs> Look at that, looks so nice. Actually calculate how many turns it has. See, if we took any of these and showed the specs, let's say 16 millihenries. Or micro Henry's. Okay, for micro Henry's. So if we, if we clicked on them. Oh, it gave you the length. Ah, okay. We could actually do an example with this. So if we know that the inductance is four microhenry, right? And what else do we know? We know the length of that solenoid. Okay. We know that the core material they use is ferrite, the diameter. We know its inductance, right? So what can we calculate here? I love making real life problems too from actual data. So it's like we're gonna utilize the equation that we just got, mu n squared a over L, right? Here's the solenoid. So, uh, what's the length of that? The length is 22.23 millimeters. The diameter is, it says here the diameter, 9.65 millimeters. Inductance is four micro Henry's and then the resistance is 12 milli ohms 12 milli ohms and that's it right so how so what can we calculate here what's our, our unknown so we know its inductance is four, four microhenries. Uh, what's the mu? Uh, didn't they say somewhere that the, uh, the ferrite core, the ferrite iron core has a relative permeability of 200? I think we read somewhere, right? So that means its permeability is 200 times more. In other words, it permits magnetism to flow through it 200 times better than vacuum or air, right? So it's mu would be 200 times the mu zero of, of a vacuum, right? Four pi times 10 to the minus seven. So the ferrite iron core relative permeability is 200. So then 200 times that, but now N, we don't know the number of turns, how many turns there are. 
the area is going to be what? Pi times the radius squared, or we could just do it by the diameter. What's the diameter? 0 0.00965 meters. So we can do pi times diameter squared over 4. Right? Pi times diameter squared over 4. That's the area of this. Right? And then divide it by the length, which is, well, let's put this as small l. And that's big L is the inductance. So then big L is, uh, so small L is what? Uh, hold on. Okay, change that to meters. 0 0.02223. There you have it. So now we can show for the number of turns that they have. Let's see here. This, oh, you know what we can do is uh, 10 to the 7 can go there for 10 to the minus 7 and make this uh, 10, right? Because 10 to the minus 7 goes down there, goes up to the top, changes that to a 10, and then that 0 cancels this 0. Okay, so now this is just going to be four times this cross multiply, four times 0 0.00, 0 no, four times 0 0.02223, okay, so divided by 20, divided by Four divided by pi, right? It's now divided by another pi, times four, so I'm taking everything to the other side, times four divided by this thing squared. Point oh oh nine six five squared, right? And then that's n squared, so it'll be n squared is four point eight three seven four. So now n would be what square root of that two point. 2.2 turns. That seems to be too little. Only two turns of the solid. Only two of those turns. So literally means just like that, like that. And that's the solenoid. Um, hmm. Something is off. We should get more turns, right? Because if the length of it is two. 22 millimeters, how long is that? That's like, this is uh, 10, 10 millimeters, 20 millimeters. So the solenoid is about this long, literally. Like from here, it's hard to imagine that they just did two loops there. Maybe the mu that we have the, is not necessarily 200. Relative permeability, permeability of iron ferrite core. Okay, so there's a different engineering toolbox for that too. 
Remember how in the beginning of the semester we were looking at this website a lot for conductivity, specific heat. So what they're doing here is giving you the total permeability or if you just want to know the ratio, they just give you the ratio right here. Um, so iron is ferrite, wait, iron ferrite, nickel, zinc. Yeah, there's, it varies too much, so we really don't know. Um, iron ferrite, stainless steel. Iron is 5,000. Iron, pure iron annealed, 200,000. Uh, water is just about the same as uh, vacuum. Wood is about the same. Okay, so let's see. It's a ferritic stainless steel, annealed ferritic nickel zinc ferrite. So I guess from 16 to 640. Uh, so 200 seems reasonable because it's kind of in between that range. So it could be anywhere from 16 to 640. Which one of those would give me better result, more realistic in this case? <laughs> <laughs> right? If it's 16 to 640, what do I want the N to be? Bigger number, right? So should I use the smaller value or the larger value? Let's say I use, instead of 200, oh yeah, you know what I could do? Let's say I use 20 for the relative permeability, 20. So then what will happen is this will disappear, one of the one of the zeros. So then what could I do? Let me square uh, square this number. Right. So I squared it to get the n squared, but then if I have one less zero here, this will be 48. Right, so if the magnetic permeability of that iron material was 20 instead of 200, you know, see. So now what will be the number of turns? So multiply this by 10, and that's now square rooted. Okay, seven turns. Okay, that makes more sense. You could do seven turns within two centimeters. It would look like this. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven. You see? And now put an iron core in there. There you have it. So if you opened it up for that, it'll be nice if you order some of these at home, break them open, and then do the math and see how many loops they have. <laughs> right? And then you can actually check to your calculation. So do that before the final exam. <laughs> Order a bunch of those.